As the Supreme Court weighs a case that could strip away federal abortion protections under Roe v. Wade, some states are preparing for a surge of out-of-state patients. Illinois will be the only one standing in the middle of the country to absorb thousands, tens of thousands of patients who will now be sort of mass mobilized to be able to get that care. A leak of a draft opinion indicated the Supreme Court may overturn Roe v. Wade, meaning abortion laws would fall under states' control. One state could go as far as banning most abortions um, in that state, and another could continue to protect abortion rights as it stands currently. Healthcare providers are expecting an influx of patients traveling to what some people are calling abortion islands. These are states like Colorado and Illinois, where abortion access is protected but are surrounded by states with more restrictive laws. Since the implementation of Texas's SB8, we have seen a substantial increase, almost 150% increase in the patients we are seeing outside of our service area. It's going to have a huge strain on what is an already fragile abortion access network. So how are abortion providers in states like Illinois preparing for the possibility of a post-Roe America? And what does it mean for the surge of patients seeking care at these facilities? As many as 26 states are expected to ban or restrict access to abortion if the Supreme Court overturns Roe v. Wade. Lawmakers, abortion providers, and anti-abortion groups have been preparing for this shift for years. So trigger laws are these pieces of legislation that uh, about 13 states have passed in recent years, and they're designed to fairly quickly and in some cases immediately ban abortion if su the Supreme Court overturns Roe v. Wade. Meanwhile, some other states have uh, pre-Roe v. Wade bans on abortion that could potentially take as effect as well. Illinois is among several states that are becoming a refuge for abortion access. It shares a border with Missouri, one of the 13 states with trigger laws. Just as Missouri has been passing legislation to restrict access, Illinois has been doing the work on the other side to ensure that access to abortion is secure not just for its own residents, but for those who are going to be fleeing from their own states. Dr. Colleen McNicholas is the chief medical officer for the St. Louis Planned Parenthood branch, which operates medical clinics in both Missouri and Illinois. The clinics provide a range of reproductive health care services, including abortion care. In 2019, Planned Parenthood built a clinic in Fairview Heights, Illinois, to meet the growing needs of out-of-state patients. It's located about 15 miles from the Missouri border. We were strategic about both where we were going to build this facility, how big we were going to build this facility. It is right along major highways, so thinking about how people are going to need to travel. It's not far from an airport, so for folks who are going to need to fly, they would be able to do that. Illinois borders five states that could ban or further restrict abortion if federal protections are overturned. Missouri and Kentucky have trigger laws in place. Iowa currently bans abortion after 20 weeks of pregnancy and could pass more restrictions if Roe is struck down, according to the Guttmacher Institute, a policy group that supports abortion rights and tracks national abortion statistics. Wisconsin has an unenforced abortion ban that predates Roe, but it could go into effect if the decision is overturned. And Indiana may also take steps to outlaw the procedure, according to the Guttmacher Institute. This will be a public health crisis that this country has not faced before, where because states will be abdicating their responsibility to basic health care, normal health care, life-saving health care, we are now going to have to figure out how to mass mobilize up to 36 million people who are capable of getting pregnant to a very limited number of states in this country. After Texas passed legislation last year banning abortion after about six weeks, nearby states like Colorado reported a rush of patients. That has meant that the number of abortions performed in Texas has fallen by about half, according to um, the state. But also that means that a lot of people are traveling out of state for abortions. In Illinois, the uptick in patients from out of state is already happening, according to the state's health department. In 2014, nearly 3,000 non-residents received abortions compared to more than 9,600 in 2020. And we are requesting $151 uh, from the Chicago Abortion Fund. That sounds correct. All right. This is the Regional Logistics Center at the Planned Parenthood in Fairview Heights, Illinois. Here, call center employees connect patients with resources to cover transportation and medical costs tied to abortion services. All right, so that leaves us with a balance of $151. 
you live 300 miles away from this last and only remaining abortion clinic, we're talking about navigating hundreds of miles more than one time on a very tight time frame where you have to negotiate time off of work and child care and reliable transportation. For many people, it just puts abortion out of access. And so in January, we stood up what we call our Regional Logistics Center, which manages those navigation tactics and logistics for all of the patients coming to Southern Illinois. Bye-bye. If Roe is overturned, Planned Parenthood says the Southern Illinois region could see upwards of 14,000 more patients each year. While many patients are from bordering states, others come from as far away as Texas, sometimes traveling more than 900 miles. As more patients flood a smaller number of providers, we are going to see wait times go up. We are already hearing from folks that the first two or three clinics that they contacted have three and four and five week waits. It means if you want medication abortion, you might be pushed out of that particular service line. Or for some people, you might be pushed out of abortion care altogether. To get ahead of the expected surge, the Fairview Heights Planned Parenthood is adding new positions. It's also considering operating seven days a week, up from six, with 12-hour days and nighttime shifts. And so we are hiring lots more folks, not just in our clinic worker space, but also hiring a lot more case managers, those folks who are working in the Regional Logistics Center. Another way Illinois providers are preparing to meet the surging demand is by allowing nurse practitioners and other advanced practice clinicians to carry out abortion procedures. Along with the Fairview Heights facility, Planned Parenthood built two new abortion clinics and health centers in Flossmoor and Waukegan, near the Indiana and Wisconsin borders. Anti-abortion groups, meanwhile, are working to build more crisis pregnancy resource centers in the Chicago area. I've spoken with some anti-abortion lawmakers or um, groups in other states that fear that the accessibility of abortion in a state that borders their own um, kind of threatens the impact of what a near ban on abortion or near total ban on abortion might mean. Illinois Right to Life is an anti-abortion organization focused on educational outreach. In a statement, a spokesperson for the organization said, we will continue working to make sure that women across Illinois know that help is available that will benefit them as well as their children, both born and unborn. The Supreme Court's decision on Roe v. Wade is expected by the end of June or early July. As the country awaits a final decision, abortion providers are mobilizing to expand access to patients. The biggest challenge is going to be in getting folks to that care in a timely manner. The other real important aspect of a post-row reality is making sure that folks who are terminating their pregnancy are free from criminalization. 